just come to pick up this pagoda which has been stored in a unit for the last eight months opened the boot and wondered what that terrible smell was and we've got a little family of mice living in here don't know what they've been eating but whatever it was they certainly didn't like it because they're all dead the seventh little mouse we found in here i don't know if they just particularly like mercedes or something definitely not one of those beautiful sunny days in bristol today we've just pulled this car out of the friend's lockup where it's been for the last eight months and miraculously it started straight away it's a 230 sl um what's not so good is we found a whole load of dead mice in the back of it so i'm just trying to clear it out and clean it up and the other thing is the front brake here is locking on you can smell burning when you're driving and um this wheel is hot here which is basically how you can tell the car hasn't been used for a long time it's not unusual for the brakes pads to stick or the calipers to stick so we're just gonna whiz this wheel off have a quick look and see if it's something simple because this car is going to be used in a film in the next few days and um we've got to make sure it actually works remember how this comes apart we're just going to knock out the um brake pad pins this clip here is holding them in um, and then we should be able to everything's so hot we should be able to pull out these pads but you might find that they're actually locked onto the disc <coughs> to get these um, pads out you can sometimes do it with a screwdriver carefully just wedge them out you can get special hook tools as well but the screwdriver is certainly moving this one so we'll have a quick look at them it's just about out that pad is so hot Which, and what happens often is that these calipers sorry these pistons inside here don't move in and out freely that came out okay so i suspect that's not the problem i suspect that when we try and get this one here out it'll be slightly tricky this one's coming out as well oh that's hot and once again it looks as if there's a whole load of gunk in there that's probably i don't know the rubber seal or whatever i've never taken one of those um, breaks the pieces. I just happen to have this brake piston caliper separation tool that basically when you wind it in it forces the pistons out so I've clamped that onto the disc and there's a gap there between the pistons you can see what I'm going to do now is put my foot on the brake and that should squeeze the pistons to touch the outside of this then I'm going to basically und and tighten this up to see if I can force those pistons out maybe by getting a little bit of movement in there we'll be able to unseize them possibly we might be able to get a little dab of grease on the outside of the piston casing so you've got to be pretty careful doing that around brakes because you don't want to get any brakes on the uh, grease on the actual brakes so I'm just gonna squeeze the brakes now ideally when you squeeze the brakes those calipers should spring back but I suspect they're not going to. Okay so we have the culprit you can see that that piston on that side is springing back but this one on this side is not springing back so what we're going to do is just tighten this up now get that piston in we might see if we can get a little tiny dab of grease in there you can see in there where the piston is slightly rusty now this should be a rubber seal around here that's perished and that lets the moisture in and allows moisture and corrosion to start on that cylinder really carefully put some grease on the side of the piston that we can see and um, we've wound it in as far as it will go and i'm going to put the foot on the brakes again and keep repeating that until that piston starts going back in of its own volition okay, that's brilliant news because that piston has already started to spring back in because this is no longer clamped to the disc so it's not all the way in but it's moving which is important so we're going to repeat that process again and see if we can just free that up even more so we fixed this side of the caliper here you can see that that's springing all the way in this one here not quite springing all the way in so we're going to repeat the process using a long thin screwdriver getting some grease on the outside of that and keep squeezing the brakes down it is springing back a little bit but not all the way these um calipers are now springing back enough to e let me easily get these brake um, pads in so now i'm just going to pump the brakes a few more times and make sure that with the brake pads in they're still springing back okay we've just tested the brake pedal 
and these pads are still loose so we're going to put the clip and the pin and the wheel back on and take this little baby for a test drive and see if the brakes are still getting hot just a tiny little hint make sure these pins actually line up with the holes etc before you put the clip in and uh, makes life a lot easier and then you can just tap them out and hopefully those brake pads will be in exactly the right place it's quite tricky getting those end of those pins to align up with these holes and it helps if you use the wheel brace and actually push that spring back a little bit at the top without touching the pins because otherwise you will misalign them again and um, so we've got them seated but not all the way we're just going to tap them in now we've got the wheel back on um, I mentioned this before but unless you're pretty confident about the seals of your car I wouldn't use the jacking point why I always jack it is here and then use bricks underneath here just in case the jack fails you obviously if you're doing longer term work you'd use axle stands as well Thing we've got to remember to do is tighten up the um, nut wheel nice crisscross pattern. Obviously, you probably wouldn't have a torque wrench with you if you did this on the road, but it's about 100 newton meters the correct torque for these wheel nuts. I'm just going to do them tight, as they say in Bristol. I've finished the red project car over there. I'm going to start paying some attention to this pagoda, which I've had for many, many years and really have done nothing with and spent nothing on. It's just been a really super reliable car, but just little things like the rust on the inside of this hubcap, dead easy to sand that off and treat it with rust encapsulator or pour 15 or something like that. But if you leave it, um, it won't get any better. And with this chrome ring piece, just starting to see the first signs of rust there. Obviously a lot of that would be brake dust from where those brakes have been locking on, but it's not a big job to actually tidy these up before they start going horribly wrong. The wheel jack and brace tuck away nicely underneath there on this pagoda. And in our, in our gold parts car over there, we did actually find one of these wheel braces. I think they're the same for the 107 and the 113. So we'll be restoring that and using it for this project car. The bit that often catches me out is when you do put the spare wheel back in, put it with that side facing up and put the spare wheel cover on first because it's extremely difficult to clear this bit of the car without getting your fingers trapped in the west. Once you've got the wheel and the cover in just peel the cover back and then you can align up the hole and use this bit here to tighten the wheel down. I haven't looked in here a long time but actually it's reminded me that at some stage we need to redo the some of the seat springs on this car and also in here I believe is a very valuable part that's probably about 300 pounds worth of part which I bought from Roger Edwards Motors in London many years ago I think that's the um what is that cold start not cold start what's it called warm-up regulator something like that we can't get that part anymore so at some stage we'll be fitting that because it's seized on this car doesn't work not that it seems to make much difference but it probably just affects how rich the car runs and here is an electronic ignition system that i bought ages ago which fits inside the distrib distributor cap which i've yet to fit to this car but as i say as soon as we finish this project which has only taken 10 times longer than i ever imagined um We'll get onto the pagoda. It's still lashing it down with rain here, so I'm not going to take this for a test drive just now, although the car's been out in the rain anyway. Um, we're just going to hope that we've actually fixed it. Drive to the filming tomorrow.